Welcome back, everybody. Sometimes we already know ahead of time what stocks we want to research because maybe we wanted to buy Amazon for years or we hear about an interesting company from a friend. And at that point, we just need to go into our research process and do the analysis. But what about when we're actively looking for new stocks and we're not sure what we're looking for yet? Like, What's the best way to do that? So I wanted to show you the process that I go through to find new stocks, and it's using the Seeking Alpha stock screener. So in this video, we're going to go over the Seeking Alpha stock screener and show Show what it can do, look at one of my existing screeners and how it works, and then create one of our own step by step. So let's get started. Now, in order to use the Seeking Alpha stock screener, you need Seeking Alpha Premium. And although most of the numbers and data are actually free on the Seeking Alpha website, in order to use the stock screener, you do need to be a premium member. So I'm just putting that out there. All right. So if we go over here to the tools, we can see that stock screener is right here on this list. So if we go ahead and click it, if you have previous screens, they'll show up here. And then they have some ones that they've kind of created that you can use that are kind of built in already. We're gonna use the custom ones just because I think that's more interesting and that's kind of what I do. But as you can see here, this one is called similar to Visa. Now I wonder what that means. Now, if you guys have watched this channel, you know how much I love Visa as a stock and as a company. And so, yes, I created a screener that kind of mimics the parts of Visa's fundamentals that I find really attractive to try to find more companies like Visa. So let's check this screener out. If I click it, um, it has some stuff here, which we're gonna go over all this in detail but you can see that it automatically kind of creates the list of stocks that meet the criteria that I set. And I like to look at it by market cap because it just helps me. And here's the first good sign of my screener. Visa is actually on the list. So clearly I'm at least hitting the criteria that includes Visa as a stock, which is important. But the cool part is MasterCard is also on the list, which is what you would expect, right? Because they're very similar. And there's some other ones that are actually pretty interesting companies that are, you know, over $20 billion in market cap. You have Broadcom, you have ICE, you know, International Exchange, Coinbase. So it's pretty cool that there are certain criteria that just happen to show up and is giving you companies that kind of match that pattern. And if we look at what that pattern is, we can see here, if I go to advanced filters, or actually, let me go to edit filters first. What you can see here is I have a country here, which is United States. And this gets a little bit confusing because initially I thought that it meant it was only stocks that are on U.S. exchanges. But actually what this means is it's stocks that are based in the U.S. in terms of headquarters. So for this particular screen, it's not a huge deal. But in general, I don't really use this as much anymore because I want to see a wider group that I can kind of pick from myself. But in terms of the industry and sector, the only reason that I did this was when I originally ran the scan, I got a lot of REITs, like real estate investment trusts. And that wasn't what I was looking for in general. I was looking for um, other type of companies. And so I basically picked every sector and industry except real estate. Now, the alternative is you could just leave this blank and just ignore the real estate items that happen to come up in the list. But anyway, that's what that is. All right, so let's get to the good stuff. Now, the three criteria that I have to kind of mimic a company that um, has fundamentals that are close to visas is I have revenue growth, and this is projected revenue growth. So projected revenue growth needs to be above 10%. And then in terms of profitability, gross profit margin needs to be at least over 50%, which one is very good, but two is not really like Visa, right? As you guys know, Visa is like 97% or some crazy thing. Uh, but what I noticed is that when I put in the Visa numbers, you know, it didn't really bring up any companies except for Visa and MasterCard. So um, what I did was just expand that a little bit to say basically anything over 50. And if I find a company that's interesting, I'm going to dig into them more anyway. So that's what that's about. And then free cash flow margin needs to be at least above 40%. So when I run this, I get 25 results. And if we do this by market cap, so I only look at the biggest companies first, you can see that there's Broadcom, there's Visa and MasterCard, which is great. It means that my screen at least makes a little bit of sense. And then things like ICE and Coinbase and all that. And so what this does is it gives you kind of a starting point to say, okay, the things that I really like about a company like Visa are that 
The profitability measures are off the charts. They have good revenue growth measures. And I could have added a bunch of other stuff too, right? I could have said, oh, okay, well, you know, maybe their valuation is in this certain range that I think is attractive right now, right? And I could have added those things here because you can see all the normal tabs that you get on Seeking Alpha are actually on this list. So now I can say, okay, well, here's my list of items. Let's see which one has the best price to cash flow right now. And as you can see, when it comes to price to cash flow, you can say, okay, well, let's look at ICE because it actually looks pretty favorable. It's come down a little bit. And then you can start your research, right? It's the normal process you would use if you use Seeking Alpha. So it's a pretty nice tool. And the cool part about this is that if you have a business or a stock that you really like, then you can kind of mimic the criteria that you use to evaluate it and just kind of put it in here. Because when you see the advanced filters, what you'll notice is all this stuff is the same stuff that you use in Seeking Alpha to do your normal research. And that's one of the reasons why I like it so much. So if I'm like, okay, well, I wanna look at valuation, price to cash flow, or maybe say, you know what, I really like the, the quant factor grades, or I really like the ratings on Seeking Alpha, and I wanna use that as my criteria, you can do that as well. And we're gonna go through all this when we create our own. Okay, so let's go back to the main page here, and let's actually create a new screen. Now, I'm going to change a lot of these because I don't want all this stuff in here. Country, sector, I don't want any of that. So I'm going to just kill all that. And what I'm going to add is, let's say, you know what? I'll do market cap and I'll do price to cash flow. Obviously, revenue growth. Uh, let's do profitability measures. Let's do gross profit margin, free cash flow margin. And well, let's start there. Let's see what we get. So for market cap, and obviously this is going to be different for every single person, right? This is the beauty of it is you can personalize this to meet the criteria that's interesting to you. Now, for me, in terms of market cap, I don't really like small cap companies all that much. You know, the, the lowest I really want to go is maybe $2 billion, um, in market cap. And it just helps kind of weed out a lot of the really small companies that, at least right now, I don't really have a lot of interest in. And so if we put that as $2 billion, so it basically means that the minimum is $2 billion and it goes up to anything over a trillion, right? Or it's basically like, I don't want to say infinity, but it's $2 billion and up. And if I go to valuation, let's say um, price to cash flow needs to be less than 20 and also zero. I don't want it to be negative, right? Because if you have a company that is negative cash flow, sometimes it'll treat it as a negative number. And I don't want that. I only want positive cash flow, less than 20. Then let's say growth needs to at least be projected growth at 10% or higher. And then profitability margin, let's say at least 40, maybe. And then free cash flow margin, let's say at least 15. And we're just kind of doing this as we go, right? Like you can tweak these to be as broad or as narrow as you want. So if we look at this and then I'll do this by market cap again, what we see is top of the list, Alphabet and Google. Hey, that's nice to see. Obviously, that's one that I added recently, Meta. And the interesting part about those two is when you look at these criteria, I mean, Price to cash flow under 20, you know, revenue in double digits, gross profit margin over 40, free cash flow margin over 15. Like those are pretty high quality metrics in my opinion. And to have companies like Alphabet and Meta, even after they've, you know, performed pretty well, still hit those measures, man, I feel like it really shows how much value is in those companies right now. It's pretty crazy. Oracle is here. So that's interesting. Um, Realty Income actually made the list. And look at this. So if you want to know why I started looking at Lululemon again, Lulu actually came up on my screener as I was kind of looking at, okay, you know, what companies might be interesting to dig into. And it just so happened that I looked into Lulu last year already, so I was pretty familiar with the company. And catching it on the screener just reminded me to go look at it again after it kind of went down in the market pretty bad after their earnings call. So in that case, it's pretty cool because that's one that I actually just added and it just kind of reminded me that it was out there after their earnings call and then just running my screener seeing that it actually met kind of my basic criteria. So that was pretty cool. So obviously the beauty of this is you can add whatever you want. So let's say you're like, you know what? I like this, but I really 
am doing a dividend only portfolio. So um, add dividend yield and then also dividend growth. And let's see kind of what it does for us here. Let's say the dividend yield has to be at least 1% and the dividend growth on the five year needs to be at least 10%. Now, as you can see, it whittles our results down to 18 companies. And if we go look at what those 18 companies are, we can see that, look at that, Oracle is one, which is actually really interesting because that's you know a $300 billion market cap company because we're basically saying, I want a company that's at least $2 billion in market cap, has a dividend yield of at least 1%, dividend growth on the five-year of at least 10%, a price-to-cash flow value of under 20, a revenue growth, projected revenue growth of over 10, and gross profit margin over 40, and leverage free cash flow margin over 15, and it spits out all these magical things, and boom, there's Oracle, right? So that, to me, is really the power of this, because you can have your specific criteria and just find companies that might meet the ballpark. And then you get to dig into your real detailed analysis. Then you can say, okay, is this a company that has a good strategy? Do they have good products? Do they have a mode? Do they have, you know, what other things you, you want to research that aren't going to show up on just like a quantitative list like this. So if you look at all the things you can use here, you have company details, just some basic info ratings. So like the quant ratings, the analysts on Seeking Alpha, then Wall Street analysts, the quant factor grades, you know, training. I mean, this is more like RSI and stuff for, you know, people who are using um, like the technical signals. And then the actual like grades on the site. So if you are using the grades, then that's kind of interesting here because you can actually add them as criteria. And then all the normal things that you would use kind of on the charting tab, you know, earnings, valuation, growth. And all those things are still here, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to change this a bit to kind of open it up. I'm guessing the dividend growth is probably the thing that, yeah, that knocked down a bunch. But let's say, you know what, I do care what these other analysts think. And let's say, which one is Wall Street telling us is a buy or a strong buy, right? So at least a buy, a buy to strong buy. Let's say done. Now it's 23, and there's Oracle again, and Prologis and Realty Income. And so you can see how powerful this can get. It's basically anything that's on the Seeking Alpha uh, criteria, like the charting criteria, you can use to be able to filter against. And the beauty of that, again, is those are the same tools that you're using to do your research. And now you're just running all the stocks through a screener and trying to find what they are. Now, the one thing that I will say, whatever you do, if you use these screeners, what you can see is this says untitled screen, hit this button, save as, because it is critical if you don't. Like I have lost so many of these screeners because I'm just working in it. I filter everything, I get it to where I want, and then I just forget to save it and it won't actually auto save. So if you click away from the screen right now, this whole thing will go away and you will have to start from scratch. So save as is important. And let's say, which one was this? The, the dividend one? So this is uh, actually here, I'm going to tweak this because I don't, I won't use it like this. So if I go back here and I say, no, not that let's remove the rating. Let's remove the dividend yields and let's keep these my 121. So if I go ahead and save this, I'll save this as, so what am I using? Price to cash flow, growth, profitability. This is like affordable profitable growth. I don't know that's a great name, but that's the name we're going with. So hit save, and then it's there, right? And so now you're good. And if, and if you make any changes, you will still have to hit save again. Like if I add this, what you'll notice here is that you do have to hit save again. Like if I go out of this, it's going to remove that. But now if I go back to my all screens, now I have another one. I have affordable, profitable growth. And similar to Visa. Now, I just want to caveat this with saying a stock screener is not there to tell you what stocks to buy. It should really be at the beginning of your process and just helping you weed out a bunch of stocks so that you only spend time doing analysis on the ones that you're really interested in. But you still have to do the analysis 
first. But still, overall, it's pretty easy to use. And the reason why I like using it is because I'm researching and seeking alpha every day anyway. So being able to have a screener use the same data elements that I normally see and then go straight into my research after I find something is really nice. So what do you guys think about the Seeking Alpha stock screener? Is it something that you're actually using or using something similar? Or in general, how are you finding new stocks to research? Let me know down in the comments below. Now, if you're interested in Seeking Alpha Premium, but you want to know more about what's included and what type of features it has, I did a whole review video on it a few months back, and you can watch that video by clicking this right here. Hope you guys have a great day out there. Financial independence is true freedom, so keep building and stacking wins, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.